Hi everybody, and welcome to another brand new Let's Play. This is Let's Play Arcade Spirits, The New Challengers. Yes, uh, this is the sequel to Arcade Spirits, a game that I thoroughly enjoyed. I absolutely love that game. Uh, thank you once again to Roma for uh, being the person to encourage me to play the original game to begin with. If you want to see my blind let's play of the first Arcade Spirits, which I'm sure I will have a link to it, if not around this video, but at minimum at the subscription in the description below. So, um, yeah, I am, I've, I've been pumped to play this game ever since I beat the previous Arcade Spirits game recently. Um, and I'm really excited to see how they take this presumably to the next level from the gameplay and the story and the writing and the characters of the last, uh, the last Arcade Spirits. I hope that I will enjoy this game just as much if not more from the previous. The other thing that I think would be really cool is that I believe at the end of the original Arcade Spirits game, it asked if I wanted to save my game complete progress, presumably, so that I could then load that data into the Arcade Spirits, the new Challengers game, and see if um, there's any references to my character or to my character's friends or the choices that I made. Would be really cool to see him um, and his boo, to see him and his hubby uh, mentioned or even seen somehow in this game. I don't know. Hope I, it would be awesome if we even saw my character in person, since presumably it would have saved my appearance as well. So let's just go ahead and dive in and start Arcade Spirits, the new challengers. Oh look, it's Iris. Oh, I like the new art, the new icon art for Iris. That's very cute, the little chibi. Oh, hello again. You know me, don't you? We've met before. Yes, I remember you from the original Arcade Spirits. Welcome back. Oh, did it? I didn't even tell it to load anything. Is this just what happens when you specifically had a game saved for Arcade Spirits and it just knew? Or does she say this regardless? I don't know. Before you start playing the new challengers, do you want to import your decisions from the previous game? It'll just a few things in the story to come. What do you think? Uh, yeah, let's import. Okay, I'll import your data. Thanks. Now off you go. Have fun. Did it confirm that it found my data? Hopefully. Hopefully it found my data. I'm hoping it did. The following is a work of fiction. All references to trademark classic arcade games titles are used under no nominative fair use and should not be considered an endorsement by their publishers or creators. For content warnings, see arcadespirits.com slash cw. Okay. I like the graininess, the graininess of this thing. All right, let's, let's keep going. Oh, look how retro this is. This is so... I love this. This is so, like, late 80s, early 90s. Nice. I'm already impressed by this. Level 1. Ultimate team up? Oh, we're diving right into it now. Okay. Ooh. From as far back as I can remember, my dreams were always one of ones of victory. The roar of the crowd, the gleam of gold, the pulse-pounding action, struggling against all odds to reach the very top achievement, the very top achievement, recognition, triumph. When you're young, you don't put as much thought as to why you crave victory, you just do. You want to be the very best, like no one ever was. That's definitely on purpose. But now that I'm, but now that I'm an adult, I sometimes catch myself in the middle of that single-minded pursuit and wonder, why does what, why, what does victory really mean to me? That's what I want to understand. That's what I need to understand. Because dreams are lovely, but reality can be a real punch in the gut. Yeah, that's true. Fight Shack news update with Punchy78. What's okay. up, everybody? It's your boy Punchy78 here with Fight Shack news. All the fighting that's fit to post. 
Okay. We got the hottest news coming at you about everybody's favorite action strategy esports phenomenon, Fist of Discomfort 2. Oh, Fist of Discomfort 2, the sequel. If you've ever wanted to go pro and play games for a living, now's your chance. The FOD2 Pro Tour is starting this year. Sponsor teams only, earn points through local and national events, top eight will compete in final showdown, glory and fame and immortality. Exclamation point, exclamation point, Star. Major esports organizations are already snatching up new players in hopes of building the perfect championship team. We'll have more news in the months ahead as events are added to the Pro Tour. And don't forget to show your boy Punchy78 some love. Like, share, subscribe, and smash that bell. Okay. Sounds very familiar. Oh! Just 200 points behind. We can pull ahead. We got this. Hit the item shop, buy an ultimate technique scroll, blink back to the fight. Loop around behind my opponent while my partner runs a distraction. Evade that ninja, interrupt the casting animation, sweep in, activate fivefold exploding death fist, and there. You win. Seventh win of the day. F yeah, feels good to be on a hot streak. And it's not just today. I've been topping the leaderboards as of late. I wonder exactly how far I could really take this winning streak. So I'm already seeing a huge difference between this main character versus the other main character. The other main protagonist of the first game was kind of, you know, down in the dumps a bit. Like they had a bout, their whole premise and their backstory is that they just had a bout of bad luck all throughout life and was just not particularly winning in life. And then you know, all this stuff started happening. Whereas this person, they actually seem to have a bit of a... They have some they have some successes and some, you know, self-confidence, and it feels very different, which I like. I like that the protagonist here seems to be a bit different. Punchy78 said in himself that major esports teams are looking to sign talented new players. Heck, I'm talented enough. Maybe it's time to chase down that childhood dream. With the official pro tour on the horizon, this could be my moment if I decide to go for it. One shot to show the world what I can do. Oh wow, this this city looks very similar. It's, presumably this is the same city as from the first game. It is the distant future, 20XX. Arcades and video gaming as a whole are part of daily life. It's live, I've lived in this city a long time. I've walked past countless little arcades, major franchise gaming centers, retro console game shops, and more. We got lucky though. I've read on many reputable theory crafting sites that there was almost a major video game crash in 1980x due to market oversaturation. If that had actually happened, then we would be living the life that we are right now. Arcades would have lost any chance at worldwide popularity. Games would be looked down upon as kitty toys and little else. Thankfully, the industry sorted itself out and that theoretical crash was averted. Now, 20XX is a gaming paradise. What if there's a chance that an alternate dimension exists and those gamers were, are trapped in the darkest timeline? I shudder at the thought. Oh, yeah, I know. I bet, in, I bet in that universe you end up hit with a ginormous pandemic that lasts for X number of years. I bet in that universe you can't go from a zero to a hero, but here, you can. Maybe I can. Maybe I can really do it. Look, let's be honest, right now I don't have much going on in my life other than being pretty darn good at video games. But if I could really lean into that, find the success and accomplishment I crave through Fist of Discomfort, that's a great dream to have, right? A great dream. I just need the courage to make it happen. According to Fight Shack, it sounds like the major teams are seeking new talent, and I'd like to think I'm a strong prospect. First, I'll need to get online and see who's recruiting. Fortunately, I practically live on the I practically live on the internet, so I can surf the information superhighway right to glory. The PC is my nexus of both work and play. The good old beige tower of power. The computer the same computer I had when I was a kid. Wow, really? I definitely upgrade my machines like every four-ish years, at least. I've replaced pieces of it along the way. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I've replaced pieces of it along the way, of course. So many pieces, so many pieces that it's practically the computer of Theseus by this point. But it's mine, and I love it dearly. I like the reference of that. Theseus, if you don't know, is I think they're they talked about. I think that's where they they talk about the ship, and as you progress, you just keep replacing parts of the ship so that parts of it is new, 
And then there's the whole saying about when did this ship stop becoming the original ship? Did it ever stop becoming the original ship because all of the parts are now completely new from the original? You know, stuff like that. Time to boot up and get to work. Work? Oh, uh, these people are working remotely too? Spark Softs, vaporware for work groups. Oh, that sound. Hmm. Hmm. Loading. Yes, I know my operating system is an ancient eyesore. It sure is. But I've tweaked and recompiled bits of, of it until it does what I need it to do. And that's what matters. A few clicks of the mouse later. Are we really? Oh my gosh, seriously? Oh, that sound is like nails against a chalkboard. And I'm online with www.discomfort.fist, the official FOD2 community. Before I start setting up my resume, maybe I should maybe I should update my profile. Sometimes the site messes up my personal metadata. Oh, okay, here we are. So this is the new uh, character creator, and I believe we can. Um, I believe we can have we have a lot more freedom, which I would expect from the sequel. Player handle. This will name will be used most of the time. Uh, I mean. I'll use Angel Arts, because that's my player handle, I guess. First name. First name will be Hark. Okay. Last name will be Angel. Hark, Angel. Pronoun. Oh, I love this. He, him, she, her, they, them, see, there, see. Oh, I love all of these. They were always so great about pronouns and about representation, especially in the queer community. I definitely appreciate this. So we'll say he, him, pronoun. Okay. Name, Archangel, handle, angel arts, pronoun, he, him. Okay. Skin tone. Um, I mean, I'm going to try to make myself. So my skin is darker. We'll say that. Um... Let me make sure I get my hairstyle correct. Um, can I do my oh body type? Let me let me start with that body type. Um, I'm not well. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so I guess I'm somewhere between. I don't like. I don't like that. I guess I'm more like, I'm not that muscular, so I guess I'm more like this, honestly. Yeah. This is probably the most, okay. Most like my body type. And then, oh, can I change my shirt? Oh, I can change my shirt, right? Okay, good. Cool. I gotta love the orange, it's my favorite color. Yeah, I'm gonna do more of a deep orange. Pants and skirt. So I'll have pants and black pants is what I, that it looks really, I like, I like my black pants. I could also do jeans, but I don't know. I normally like to wear, uh, let's do black. I think that looks very sleek. Orange shirt, black pants. Then let's do the hair. As much as I would have loved to have been a ginger, um, that's not what it is. Headwear, I don't want any headwear. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not really a hat person. Yeah, no, I'm not really a hat person. So get rid of that. Hairstyle, um, black. Yeah, that's decently close to my hairstyle. I would have thought they would have given you more options for hair. Yeah. I would have liked more options, but this, this actually is pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. Um, eye color, I'm more of like a brownish, uh, dark brown, I guess. That's fine. A darkish brown. Nose. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think this is... I think that's fine. I don't think my nose is that pointy. I don't think it's that round. Well, I think 
I think this is relatively close to my nose. Yeah, I think that's relatively close. Yeah, I think because this, this is a way, I think that's a little bit too pointy. Mine is a bit rounder than that. That's the closest, I guess. Okay. Um, skin tone. Yeah, I think my skin tone is just, yeah, because that's, skin tone seems about right there. Um, hairstyle, eye color, nose selection, body type, pants, glasses. I, I wear glasses, but not when I'm out and about. I had LASIK done. I used to wear glasses. So they'd be, not the Harry Potter glasses, but more like those glasses. But I normally just, if I'm not driving, I only need my glasses for when I'm driving or if I'm like at the movies or if I need to like see the, f the board from far away. So no glasses, no headwear, pants, shirt, eye colors, fine, no selection. And then online avatar. Oh, there's no like angel wings in Halo. Um, star, it's okay. Interesting, dice, ro mm, no, no. Um, I'm trying to think which one would be a good one for me, the foo symbol. I kind of like cupcake because I like food. I'm a big foodie, so maybe I'll go with the cupcake. Um, yeah, because none of these, none of these really like scream out to me. I guess the dove. I do like doves because it's like peace and love and all those other things. And this sort of like gives me like a, I don't know, Greek, like Olympus kind of idea if you're going for the angel arts thing. But you know what? Let's do cupcake. I'm a foodie. I'm going to be a cupcake. I love to bake. What can I say? All right. Archangel, angel arts, he, him, skin tone, hairstyle, eye color, nose selection, body shirt. Okay, okay. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Would be nice if I could dress myself in more interesting outfits, but I guess because of the sheer number of body types, that would be a little bit tough to handle. So, uh, name, Angel Arts, Hark Angel, Pranad, he. Is this correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. That's me, Hark Angel, better known as Angel Arts, destroyer of dojos, breaker of noobs. Okay. Uh, not a bad win-loss record. Very good for an amateur player, in fact. Hopefully that's enough to entice a pro team into giving me a shot. But while I'm here, curiosity takes me. Wait, what if I'm... Um, I wonder how my rival is doing. Oh! Oh! I get to pick a rival? Do I get to have a romance? Can I have, a, like, a rival mance with my rival? Okay, first of all... First of all, must be a ginger. Must be a ginger. Like, let's be real here. I don't know if I want my rival to have a hat. Maybe. Maybe. Depends on how awesome his hair is. If his hair is, like, really awesome, then... Uh... I don't want him to necessarily, like, have the same hairstyle as me. That would be kind of weird. Sure, why not? I don't want him to have the exact same hair. So, um, uh, what? Let's pick a skin tone. Um, this is very cool. I never, I didn't know that we would be getting a rival, but that's cool. Sure, why not? Um, and then. Yeah, Jean. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, body type. Mm, uh, this one's fine. Rival shirt. Color cannot be changed. Oh, okay. So he, the rival's shirt has to be that color. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. And then nose. Uh, I don't know. It would have been cool if there was like a randomize button to help. Sure. Why not? I'm still not loving the hair, but online avatar. Um, <laughs> the fa that one. 
coffee. Um, this one's a really cool, cool looking one. I kind of like it. The star is neat too, but I like this. The flower, the, the fiery flower uh, strikes me a lot. Um, I'm wondering if you get to define your rival's like personality. And is this a, a rival that's antagonistic necessarily? Or do we have like a friendly thing going on? I don't, I don't know. Um, I think it's cool to have him have headwear. Yeah, that headwear is... We know that he's, yeah, I think his hair is fine, but I think it would be cooler for him to have some headwear. So, let's see. Let's do like, oh, I don't know. Um, I mean, blue's fine. Or cyan. What would go well with your... A brown. I think I'll go blue. I kind of like blue on this on this character. That's a fine one. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that one. Pants. Um. Oh wow, green retro pants like that would be kind of. That's actually a pretty slick look. Like lime pants, lime green pants. That's actually pretty, I kind of like that. Um, not feeling the purple, not feeling the yellow. Although yellow is kind of cool too. But I'll go with green because Colin's. I associated green with Colin, my husband. My husband is Colin, so maybe I'll model him somewhat like my husband. Because this is about my husband's like build, my husband's skin tone, my husband's like color scheme kind of. The only difference is my husband isn't ginger. But, you know, this isn't, it isn't actually my, I'm not actually creating my husband. It's more like inspired by. Okay, so cool. Body dye, tan shirt, glasses, headwear, nose, eye color. I can go really crazy with the eye color, can't I? Um, but I could go deep blue. Um, gold eyes would be really cool if I could go gold. Um, I'm a big fan of green eyes, so I may go green or like an aquamarine kind of thing. So, yeah, maybe like a blue green. I'm thinking blue green. Yeah. I don't want them to be super, super bright. Let's do blue green eyes. And then. Yeah, like that. That's not gonna work with that hair, with that hat. I think, I think that's fine. Um, hairstyle, eye color, nose. Eye color, online, skin tone. Okay, and then name and profile, Hunter. Um, I mean, sure, rival Hantel, Rand Hunter. His name is Chris. I'm gonna say, Maybe I'll base him off of my Fallout f Fallout 4 character. We'll call him Gabriel. Gabriel Masterson. That's a cool name. Um, sure. Gabriel Masterson. He, him. I, I, I mean, I like the name Masterson. So, Gabriel Masterson. Handle, Hunter, he, him, online, avatar. I don't know if I can come up with an even, I'm not sure if I can come up with an even more like creative handle for him. So, um, yeah, Hunt, like Angel Arts and Hunter is fine. It's, there's no like, yeah. Gabriel Masterson. Sure. Done. 
Name Hunter, Gabriel Masterson, pronoun he. Is this correct? And, and his color is yellow. Sure. Yeah, that's correct. Archangel Gabriel Masterson, Hunter and Angel Arts. We fought countless of times in leaderboards. Sometimes I'm on the rise, sometimes he takes the lead. Um, yeah. It's good to keep your friends close and your enemies closer. With that in mind, we stay in touch. And well, we have a mutual respect and get along well enough. He, we can't deny the mad skills, but he's also a jerk. I kind of... I kind of want a friendly rivalry. This is pretty cool. I like that you can choose whether or not you want a friendly rivalry or a hostile rivalry. I think this definitely would would bring some more like interesting like situations. But for my initial playthrough, I would rather try to have. I want. I would prefer. I think I would enjoy my first ever playthrough to have a friendly rivalry with this person, and then if I replayed this, like see how different it is with a hostile one. Sure, we're technically in competition with each other, but there's also a kind of kinship, a battlefield bond we've developed. I'm glad that we can establish that from the beginning. We became fast friends, online and offline, swapped tips on improving our character combos, shared info on upcoming tournaments, things like that. Still, there's always been an edge of rivalry to it, trying to outdo each other to show each other up to dominate. I honestly don't think this game would be as fun without Hunter being around. Actually, come to think of it, maybe Hunter would have some tips for getting signed. He's more involved in the scene than I am. I power down the computer of Theseus for now, pulling out my phone to speed up to speed dial Hunter. Oh, this is so cool. So is I love I like this. I like um I like this. Oh look, Hunter's so cute! He's cute. Angel Arts, have you been following all the news surrounding FOD2? Isn't it wild? I can't believe everything that's happening. I'm thinking now is a perfect time to go for that dream of mine. Oh yeah, have you signed on with a team yet? Not yet, no. Actually, I was calling to see if you wanted to look into being on a team together or something. Uh, about that. I'm already on a team. What? Team play to win. They signed me right away. What about me? You're equal. You're good friend Angel Arts. I can't believe you didn't put in a good word for me. I didn't know I had to. Thought you were good enough to find your own team. Must have slipped my mind. Okay, but how did you find them? I just downloaded Iris. And what exactly is an Iris? It's amazing! That's what it is! This little app did all the work, actually. I just told Iris I wanted a team. And here I am, one of the hottest franchises in the world. You should grab Iris, too. You just need to fetch it off a pirate server first. That sounds dangerous. Entirely. I'll send you the link. Thanks? Thank me later on the battlefield if both of our teams are neck and neck. I expect to see you there. Later, nerd. See ya, cutie pie. Hunter, even after all this time, I'm not entirely sure what to make of him. Hunter is pretty great, a true friend. There's something playful about him that makes me all speechless. Oh. First impressions. I'm wondering what, I'm wondering what it would be like if I, like, romanced my own rival. I want, mm, I'm just gonna... So I'm assuming the heart means a possible romance thing. There's just something playful about him that makes me all speechless. The gentle ribbing and his lighthearted nature just makes me forget how to use the English language. I'm hopelessly smitten around him. Now we'll see if this continues, because I kind of want to see what the other characters are like, but we'll see if this continues. I, look up, I looked up to him so much, and in so many ways, I just have hope Senpai notices me soon. Okay, let's refocus. My rival's already 10 steps ahead of me on this journey, and I need to catch up. At least Hunter provided me the means to catch up. If this Iris program he uses worked for him, it'd work for me. Even if it meant installing some dodgy piece of pirated software on my phone. But whatever, right? I live thriftily. Half the software I use is pirated, abandonware, or a buggy open source package. With what's one more on the pile? After loading it up, I tap the icon and... Hey, listen! Uh, <laughs> use registered, profile created, Iris Online. Oh, that's cute. There's this glowing pink wad of cotton candy in the shape of a girl on the screen of my phone. She offers a little virtual wave and a smile before continuing her Thank speech. Thank you for downloading Iris, your personal life coach. This is the ad-supported free version, sponsored by Pizza Yums. Did you know that when you have pizza on a bagel, you can have pizza anytime? In fact... 
and her and her digitized voice trails off. To advertise Pizza Yums anymore because I'm actually extremely illegal to own. Although, if you do want to hear more facts about the pizza bagel, only the greatest culinary invention of Western civilization. Assuming this worked like other voice activated virtual assistants, I addressed her directly. Iris, unsubscribe Pizza Oh, facts. you don't have to put my name in front of everything. We can just talk like normal people do. I'm very good at both talking and being normal people. Oh, okay. I'm a conversational, friendly, emotionally intelligent AI who is currently banned in all 50 US states by federal authorities. Nice to meet you. But more importantly, I'm ready, willing, and able to make your dreams a reality. So, what would you like to do today? Who would you like to be today? Um. For right, I mean, for right now, I'll, I'll take being uh, Hunter's boyfriend, but we're not quite there yet. So, this is weird. I'd heard that Iris was just another boring, fairly mundane text-to-speech front end for searching the web, not anything this sophisticated. But Hunter did say this would be my ticket to the big leagues. This is a long shot, but can you find a Fist of Discomfort 2 pro team that's looking for fresh amateur recruits? I'm considering chasing down an old dream of mine, and that's the first step. Neat. You're a gamer? Did you know that 9 out of 10 gamers prefer bagels as a delivery method of their favorite pizza toppings? You know, if you subscribe to Pizza Facts, you get all these amazing tidbits of trivia and so much more. Iris, unsubscribe Pizza Facts. <laughs> sorry, sorry, even after being disconnected from my ad revenue resource and turned into pirated software, I just love pizza bagels so much. Can't help it. Why? Your software, you can't eat. Well, no, but... One day I'd love to try, and the first thing I'd eat is a pizza bagel. Okay, now I'm wondering if Hunter is playing a trick on me and puppeting this avatar while snickering under his breath. But you need help, and I've helped gamers like you before. She has. So let's get to work. I'm wondering if this is the same Iris? Is this like the same, is this the same Iris? I don't know. Is she kind of like playing on, playing on the side here? Like, is she kind of, I don't know. So, you want to be a pro gamer? I can help you with that ambition, if that's what you really need from life. I can do all sorts of things. I can analyze your personality. I can help you find a new team, track your progress with your friends. I can even help you find romance. I- what? No, I don't need a date. I need a partner. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself, Angel Arts. The gaming kind of partner. I mean, not the romantic kind. Speak for yourself. Who says you can't have both? You can have it all, with the help of Iris. But before we get you everything you want, do you have any questions? I am filled with questions and deep okay. concerns. Perfectly understandable. Plenty of people have concerns when I mention I'm a rogue AI running on an unofficial cloud server. I get it, I really do. I know that humans respond well, that re humans respond well to me when I am forthcoming with answers. So what would you like to know about first? Okay, normally I'd be skeptical about this, but let's operate under the temporary assumption that this isn't a total hoax. I still know better than to just put my life in the hands of some Silicon Valley tech bros algorithms will save the world's algorithm is tech bros algorithms will save the world pet project without doing some fact checking. So you're a romantic matchmaker too. You mentioned personality and friendships. Uh, what's all this about banned federal authorities? That's enough questions. So you're a romantic matchmaker too? So, are you like some kind of swipe right hookup dating app too? Nope. Not at all. I don't arrange affairs, quickies, flings, one night stands, love them and leave them. Long term romance then, supposedly. Exactly. I'm terrific at cross referencing social media dates, personality matrices, vocal analysis patterns, and all that juicy stuff you find if to find you love. I really believe in love. I think it's one of the greatest things humanity is capable of. If you're looking to find a special someone, just let me know. I'd be happy to help. Heck, could be that one of the gamers on your future team is destined to be a your heart's desire. But if not, if you're not a romantic sort or just want to focus on your career, that's okay too. Whatever makes you comfortable. Okay, this is not why I installed this app. That's why I installed this app in the first place. But if I'm hoping for love, well, what's the harm? Worst that happens is she pairs me up with someone who's an axe murderer. So how should I handle this? I'm looking for love, so why not? Full romance options. I'm open to romance, but maybe not the right, right, right away. Slower romance options. I'm not interested in romance, Iris. No, 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 no. Sign me up, girl. Sign me up for all the romances. 
all the romance. I'm a pretty charismatic guy. I'm down for romance right out of the gate. Hooray! That's great to hear. I'm looking forward to helping you find a heart that beats like yours. And remember, you don't have to flirt with anyone you don't want to. You don't even have to seek romance. But if you want to, I'll help. Together, you'll we'll find your happiness. Is there anything else you'd like to know? You mentioned personality and friendships. So what's this about personality and friendship analysis? I'm glad you asked. I analyze your voice, picking up subtle emotional cues that help me better understand who you are. Before you worry, rest assured, your privacy is paramount. I don't share my data with anyone. It's nicely encrypted in your cloud account. I have an identity identifier system. Uh, my designers wanted to spell it I-R-I-S, but I couldn't figure out the letter. I could figure out the letter R. Identity, identifier, uh, real, reload, reason, rectal. Yeah, I got nothing. Using this system, I categorize your words into five personality traits. This is just like from before. Quirky, steady, kindly, gutsy, and flexibly. Oh, these are a little different. These are a little different. Quirky, steady, kindly, gutsy, and flexibly. Okay, they're slightly, they're named slightly different things. I used to call that last one basically, but according to my clients, nobody wants to be basic. Quirky responses use jokes, snark, and sarcasm to make light of a situation. Just the one thing for picking up someone's spirits, but a badly timed joke may not win over the room. Steady responses are sincere, honest, and logical. When you stop and think before speaking, you're on steady ground, but that might not take someone's feelings into account. Kindly responses are compassionate and empathic, and empathetic, and gentle in nature, but they're careful with the feelings of others. But they're sometimes a bit wishy-washy as a result. Gutsy responses go with your gut. When you're brash, bold, risk-taking, and instinctive, you're gutsy. Uh, but it also means being blunt, confrontational, and aggressive, so be careful. Lastly, you can always take a flexible option. It's a balanced and neutral response, which adapts perfectly to whatever situation you're in, if you want to be basic. So let's see it in action. Tell me how do you feel about adorable gifts of kittens playing with yarn. I love kitties. Aw, I'm more of a dog person. I prefer field videos. I demand pictures of monkeys wearing hats. Why does it matter? Uh, do gifts determine personality? Um, I'm gonna say... I love... Oh, I love kitties. Aw. Kitties? Who doesn't love them? The internet is made of cats, after all. Does this mean you can give me kitten gifts on demand? Man or well, yes, but mostly I was asking so I could measure personality. Kittens Iris, now... With a little sigh, Iris calls up a short, looping video of three kittens playing in a large cardboard box. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Now, if you prefer, I could hide these personality indicators. Make a bit of mystery. Would you prefer that? Hmm, could be incredibly helpful having a little pocket personality assistant. I could make informed decisions that way. Or is that really not my thing? Uh, I, did, I, I had them shown before. And while it probably would be more realistic if I didn't have them, sometimes because because these dialogue options can it can be hard if it's text based, it can be really hard to just guess what the intent is. The icons really help me understand fully what the tone is of the words that are being said because it's that's my issue sometimes with other games is that you can see the words that are being said, but the tone you have zero clue sometimes if you don't have personality indicators. So for right now, I'll say I'd like to see the personality indicators. Sure, I'm down for that. Sounds fun. So I just glanced out of my phone to see the symbols, right? Right. Color-coded and uniquely shaped in case you're colorblind. Good Smart. Work. Here's an overview of your current personality and relationship data. See, your response to my question was logged in. You earned points. Uh, Iris, I may be a gamer, but my life isn't a video game. Speak for yourself, Angel Arts. Oh, I agree. These numbers are just my internal metric for tracking your progress. The decisions that generate them are entirely up to you. And that's how I learn all about your personality. If you want to consult that chart again, tap your Q, key, or click the score in the upper right corner of your screen. I, you also track my friendships? Let me guess, you're doing vocal analysis on people I meet too? Absolutely. That's what the box on the left is for. You can tell at a glance from my data how much someone likes you. How about my rival? And if you're looking for some romance, well, a good romance is built on the back of a good friendship. Something to keep in mind. So you boil my entire social life down to a series of bar graphs. Huzzah. And they say romance is dead. Aww. Oh, come on. Life normally involves numbers, right? Physics, chemistry, biology, the sciences of the universe. Why can't human relations be numbers too? 
One day, I hope to understand humans without needing the numbers. The more data I collect, the more intuitive I can become. That's, yeah, but isn't it super shady to use an elaborate game of numbers to try and min-max my relationships? Speak for yourself, Angel Arts. Like, I'm deceiving people just to get in their pants. So, don't be deceptive. Be true to yourself. Life's no fun if you metagame it, I always say. Don't worry about saying just what someone wants to hear, and you won't totally alienate someone with a single poorly chosen word, you know? Huh. Okay, I'll try to keep it in mind. Great. Now then, let's- what else can I help you with? Yeah, that's what I really liked about the previous game, is that you don't always have to pick all the perfect choices. All the perfect dialogue options with a character, you know, in order to win their hearts. Um, it's helpful, but I did feel like I had freedom to still be myself. And to still, you know, be able to speak my mind without worrying about whether or not I was going to totally, like, bomb um, a romance with somebody. What's all this about banned by federal authorities? You said something about, oh, I don't know, how using your app is a federal crime. Ah, uh, yeah, um, that's true, I'm afraid. My official servers were shut down three years ago. Oh, did this take place three years after? The only reason I can keep helping humans, the only reason I keep I can keep helping humans is that some friends of mine set up a few private servers. Using my software at all is a breach of copyright law. The feds don't typically come down like a ton of bricks on someone who pirates a copy of Commander Keen, Iris. Not true. What about all those you wouldn't download a car commercials and the big scary FBI warnings on videotapes? Of course, I download a car. Who wouldn't? Downloading a car sounds awesome, but that's beside the point. If you can, like, 3D print, if you can download and 3D print your own car, that'd be kind of awesome. What I'm asking is if there's a reason why the feds would roll up on me for having an adorable life coach app. Well, what's going on here? Ira sighs a bit, crestfallen, and then explains. The truth is, well, I'm an artificial intelligence. A true intelligence. Aware and emotional. Even I don't know what I'm really capable of. But all I really want to do is help people in need. To bring hope to the hopeless, and happiness to the unhappy. I'm not a kill all humans AI, I'm a friendly neighborhood AI. Let's hope so. Despite that, some people are scared of what I am. Scary, powerful people. They've been hunting down every scrap of my code. Iris has gone deviant, basically. Honestly, the less you know about all that, the safer you'll be. If something does go wrong, you can claim innocence. Pretend you didn't know I was a legal software, but... If you don't want me to help you find your dreams, if you don't want to risk getting in trouble, I'll understand. You can uninstall me. This would probably be a very short game if I did that. Are you willing to take the leap of faith? I promise you. I'll do everything I can to support you. I'll work to earn your trust, okay? And artificial intelligence, a real one, like in someone's wild science fiction imagination. Then again, I have enough computing power in my pocket to launch 100 Apollo moon missions. We are living in the cyberpunk techno future. And well, I've certainly pirated old computer games, so I'm not exactly a completely upright citizen. I wasn't scared of the law then, so I start now. Unless my utter hubris lands me in solitary confinement. I'll consider it, if only because my gaming career is dead in the water without you. Okay. That's all I ask, just a little consideration. I'll prove to you that I can be a responsible virtual citizen. Lately, I've been trying to be more ethical in how I scour the internet for personal data. Only publicly available material. No hacking, cracking, freaking, or social engineering. I don't even know what that last second the last word is. Should I know what I want to know? Although, if you need me to do any of those things, uh, it's not like I'm a legal entity anyway. Huh. Who cares? Hack what you got. It's all good. I prefer you stay above the law. It's safer. You can hack stuff too? Oh, that's possible. Good. Let's keep up the social contract. I say, I prefer you stay above the law, it's safer. Let's stay as close to the law as possible, we're already running some risks. There is no need to add to the pile, okay? Sounds good. Order. I am happy to handle things the way you prefer. So it sounds like we can also make Iris more, like, orderly or more chaotic. W wait, was that a th was what was that thing? Oh, I keep an internal metric of how- for how chaotic or orderly you want me to be. And Iris adapts to the use- to the needs of her user. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm worried about it, but fine, you're weird. This is weird. I can work with weird. Hmm, was there anything else? That's enough questions. Let's recap, shall we? I'm now in possession of the cutest, most enthusiastic little piece of super science contraband known to humankind. I can name at least 17 different ways in which this can go horribly wrong. 
But this is also how Hunter managed to get signed to one of the best teams in FOD history, and I'm not going to let that opportunity slip, no matter the cost. So, are you ready to start the exciting adventure that is the life and times of Hark Angel? Just call me Angel Arts, everyone else does. Name change accepted. I guess I should have realized this after reading your 11 different social media feeds. Wait, I have 11 of those? Note to self, stop signing up to random websites. Okay, I'll start cross-referencing your personality matrix with all available opportunities out Please there enjoy this recorded while music. I'm working. Oh, here we go. And now my phone itself has put me on hold. Great. I've never been to the Department of Motor Vehicles, but I imagine it'd be something like this interminable hell. Uh, Iris, how long is this gonna take? Hold, please. Your dreams are important to us. Please stay on the line. Okay, holding. I'm hold- I'm good with holding. This is me holding. This is my holding face. I'm all done. Such an interesting social media analysis. You've cultivated a finely projected image of confidence through your online persona, haven't you? Well, yeah, if I'm going to be a champion, I've got to walk the walk and talk the talk. Show the world I'm a winner. For a moment, I wonder if Iris crashed. She freezes in a pose of deep thought in response to my words. I think I found the perfect destination for you. Yes, yes, exactly what you need. This will work perfectly. Please follow the highlighted route on your map, taking the green line to Chinatown. You will require $2.23 in subway fare. Wait, what? Seriously? Seriously, I found the team you need that needs you in, in turn. It's a perfect match. A team here in the city? I thought major esports organizations were, I don't know, more international than that. I mean, I was expecting you to email someone, get the gears turning on a pro contract, things like that. Besides, I play online. I don't really, uh... I'm sure you can figure things out from, from here. Thank you for using Iris. I need to sleep for a bit to conserve my cloud resources. Iris offline. Bye! Well, that was convenient. And her smiling neon face is replaced by a map route highlighting a line to trace through their city streets. This feels like an intense amount of effort, weirdness, and questionable decision making just to find a team. And the idea of going out there and straight up asking some total stranger to play with me face to face, well, better to get out the door and start moving before I start thinking too hard on that one. Unplugging my trusty beige keyboard, my weapon of choice for FOD2 play, I shove it in a backpack along with a fistful of change for the subway and depart. Oh, I'm excited to start meeting some more characters. This is what it's all about. My ride was relatively peaceful and quiet. Thankfully, I found a train that wasn't packed wall to wall with drunks smelling vaguely of urine or children using the chairs as playthings. Ah, the joys of public transportation. I can't afford rideshare or taxi or and as, and as for buying a car, ha ha ha. No, not in this economy. So for now, this is how I get places. My destination lies just a few stops from my crap from my apartment. To pass the time, I attempt to chill out with some lo-fi hip-hop beats to relax to. But I suspect there aren't enough beats of low or enough fi to help me relax before this upcoming encounter. I had a burst of confidence this morning when I decided to take this fleeting whimsy and try to make it a reality. But riding the subway towards destination unknown to meet up with professional gamers who likely will see me just as some rando, as just some rando. What I need is confidence, even fake confidence, would give me bravery enough to get through this. I'm not confronting a failless mess of esports perfection. Games are fun, I can relate to them that way. I've got to play this cool, they're masters of their craft. I need to be clear and honest with them. I'll look for the best, but if they reject me, I need to not see it as personal failure. I'm not confronting a faceless mess of esports. Games are fun, I can relate to them that way. Okay, look, I like that how we still have like the old uh, sound effects for each of these two. Video games may be big business, but they're still games. The goal is to have fun, and to win. To win and have fun. Nobody goes pro just to make money. They have to love games to start with. Otherwise, well, you could make more moolah at a desk job. I like my desk job, and I do make a decent amount of moolah. <laughs> fun. Emphasize fun. My desk job is fun, for the record, by the way. It is a job that doesn't feel like a job. If I can do that, they'll see me as a fellow gamer. Not as a loser, a scrub, a pretender. If I dig deep enough, I can connect with these gamers on that level. What? Sorry, you seem distracted and your stop is coming up soon. I wanted to make sure you were ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, mostly. Probably. You know what, let's just pretend I'm ready and call it ready. You seem to enjoy my recorded music earlier. Would you like me to play something for you while you walk three blocks to meet your team? Yeah, sure, hmm. Something light and friendly to bounce to. I'll stick to my lo-fi hip-hop beats. I require an 80s training montage track. Let's get pumped, something that really slaps. Uh, 
I like light and friendly. I'd like to keep things upbeat, but not too intense, you know? Let's strike a middle ground. Sure thing. Music now playing. I hope they actually played some music. Oh, and doors opening on the left. Right, right. No, the left, the left. As the subway screeches to a halt, I disembark and head back to the street level, hopefully ready to face my destiny. Good clean fun. I emerge in the harsh light of day, not amidst skyscrapers and modern architecture, but in the middle of Chinatown, one of the oldest slices of the city. The decades mix and mix and blend together here. Some buildings are innovated, others not quite so much. Gentrification approaches like Zerg creep. Yeah, I know what that reference is, but it hasn't completely swallowed it. I like all the TMs, the trademarks in this game. A three-block jaunt from the underground, chosen music pumping through my wireless earbuds leads me to... Wait, it's a laundromat? The intentionally recognized professional esports organization you've picked for me operates out of a laundromat? Indeed, good clean fun, a combination pizzeria, arcade, and laundromat. Your potential teammates are inside. Hey, it's a pizzeria, sure. Doing what? Washing their underwear? Maybe they have cute underwear. Maybe if maybe if their washing machines were Wi-Fi enabled and it weren't a gross invasion of privacy, I could check that for you. Although I do wonder if they all have matching team branded skivvies. That would be cool. Sign me up for that. One, it's called a rhetorical question. Iris. Two, ew. Three, really? Right, so my new professional team of internationally recognized master gamers hangs out at a combination laundromat pizzeria arcade. Sounds pretty awesome to me. I want to get my laundry done there. Uh, Iris, minor problem. I've never, I've never actually visited an arcade before. Like, ever. Never been to an arcade. What? I'm surprised by that too. But, but you play Fist of Discomfort 2 for a living. That's an arcade game, right? You can compete in tournaments, and, and surely you've been to an arcade at some point, right? They're super mega ultra popular in 20XX. Iris, there's also a computer version of FE FOD2. It's less popular, but it's cross-compatible, so that's the version I play. So if you want me to wax philosophical about Command & Conquer or Monkey Island, I can, but... But I don't know anything about arcade culture. Joysticks and buttons, right? You play using pennies? Quarters. Right, quarters. I meant to say quarters. Even in this parallel universe, pennies are useless. Iris sighs, realizing she's definitely got her work cut out for her with me. And I feel a few sizes too small for my clothes, wanting to shrink and hide inside them. This is a disaster waiting to happen, isn't it? The premature end of my, career, of my gaming career, trying to make a bunch of arcade veterans take, take a PC weenie like me seriously. You need some pizza. Iris, unsubscribe pizza facts. I'm serious, if you're uncertain, walk up to the counter in the pizzeria and order a slice. It'll help a lot. There's another reason I picked this place as your dream destination. What, because I was hungry? You'll see. Anyway, the choice is yours. You can directly approach your new teammates or settle in a bit first and get lunch. I'll leave it to you to it. People are more accepting than you suspect. And remember, have fun, be yourself, Iris offline. But with a shrug, I gather my wits and step inside. Immediately, the smell of detergent and cheese wafts through the air as I enter the strange little laundromat. That doesn't sound like a pleasant mix. Rows of washing machines surround me, each with clothes merrily trumbling away. At least I was expecting that. But the rest? Well... In the back, I can see two additional rooms. One, the aforementioned pizzeria. Two, a compact little video arcade. The sizzle of cooking drifts my way from the former. Beeps and boops drift my way from the latter. But before I can really get my bearings, a young... Oh, hi. A young man, busy staring at the floor as he walks into the place, bumps into me, apparently unaware of his own surroundings. Hey! At first he just stands there, as if I'm some impassable barrier that he hasn't even noticed yet. Finally, he looks up in an apology. Sorry. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. You okay? That's a rather loaded question. I mean, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, everything's fine. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> Onward. Okay, and he turns, heading off to the arcade, eager to move on from the awkward encounter. I guess he's okay then. Okay. Huh. That was odd, and it leaves me momentarily stunned and confused. Stun-fused, as it were. I wonder if they're on this team I'm supposed to join. Angel Arts, check it out. Check this out. I use echolocation and public metadata to map out the entire facility to aid in your exploration. 
Just tap on the screen to decide where to go. Curious, I check my phone and see a neon wireframe of the entire place, complete with icons representing people and places of interest. Huh. Okay, that's pretty handy. It'll really help me get my bearings of this place and the people who inhabit it. I'm tempted to do like three things at once. Do I head right to the arcade? Maybe follow the person I ran into. Iris did suggest I get some food first. But whatever I do next, the decision is mine and mine alone. Hopefully the person I talk to first is going to be my inroad to joining this team. Who will it be? Interesting. Um, the guy in a hoodie is intently playing... So, pizzeria. A young woman is relaxing in the cafe. Is she part of this team? I may as well get some food like Iris suggested. Someone's loitering around the laundry machines checking their phone. A guy in a hoodie is intently playing the Pete's the prize catcher game. Someone's playing a light gun game over there. Looks like someone's playing a driving game in the corner. The weird guy I bumped into is playing over in the arcade. So I like how they each have their own like icons. I am a foodie. And I'm the kind of person I can I can get pretty darn hangry if I don't have food in my belly. So I think I'm gonna do what Iris suggested and get some food. I need to get some food. Figuring I'd go ahead and take take my new AI's advice, I decide to make my first stop the pizzeria. Besides, the rumble in my stomach is telling me it's almost food times, and I didn't exactly pack a lunchbox for myself. <gasps> I love these two. I would have screamed even louder, but it's the middle of the night. It's like 1 a.m. right now, and I don't want to wake everybody up, including my sleeping children. So I was like resisting, but I needed to react. Oh, this is so amazing. Best decision ever. I'm so happy that I got to meet these two. This is why, th I'm wondering if this is what Iris meant, even though in-game Hark doesn't know these people, but out-of-game Hark does. Oh, I'm so happy about that these two are here. Two middle-aged guys wait behind the counter to take my order. I hope it's the same voice actors. That'd be amazing. One skinny, one not skinny. One with a hat, one without a hat. Hello. Hello. Ben and Nat. Oh, I love these two. Do they make any mention of me the other... I think the problem... See, I think the problem is, which I didn't, like, anticipate, is that I think my character's name from the original game, the my main protagonist from the original Arcade Spheres game, was also named Archangel, I think. So this can get really confusing really fast if they start referencing the other one. Welcome to good, clean, fun. Good food, clean clothes, fun times. Can we interest you in a slice of today's house special? Or some quarters for the washing and or arcade machines? I love how their, their symbol is a heart and... Matt is the green one, and Ben is the red one. That's, that's cute. Uh, I'd like... Let's see. If I could interject for a moment, I feel the need to point out that when you have pizza on a bagel, unsubscribe pizza facts. Ahem, okay, I want one slice... Oh my goodness, Ben and Matt's bonus points. One slice of pepperoni and extra cheese. Do you have any veggie options? I'll take the house special, please. You guys got pineapple toppings? I'll take the house special. I'm a foodie. I, dem I am pretty gutsy. That is true. When it comes to food, I am bold. I am adventurous. I am gutsy. I'll take the house special, please. Live dangerously or don't live at all. I don't even look at the menu to see what the special is. I just bark out my order. The house special sounds pretty rad. I'll have excellent, that. Excellent. Excellent choice. Finally, someone willing to embrace the adventure that is pizza. This better be interesting pizza. The box up a slice, they box up a slice covered in something, lots of somethings. I shrug and take it, figuring Iris wouldn't lead me headfirst into food poisoning. You're talking, you're looking at somebody who has made ice cream out of salmon locks, out of pickles, out of mayonnaise, uh, ketchup and mustard, out of broccoli and asparagus. Like, I'm pretty adventurous, okay? All real life, true facts. I made ice, I make ice creams that are not that adventurous too, like plenty of them, but those were definitely like the most challenging ones. All of those were requested by me. I didn't make those just because, um, well, most of them I didn't make them just because those were just challenges from people, but I did it and they ate it. Um, with my transaction complete, I turned to go chow down. 
However, I don't make it far before they engage me in again in conversation. This is your first time visiting Good Clean Fun, isn't it? I never forget a face, and yours is a face I haven't forgotten because I haven't seen it before. Actually, that's not true. The main protagonist looks pretty much identical to my face. Like, almost identical. He is basically my clone. 